So welcome back to the small batch processing uh, part two. Today and through this video, we're going to be racking this wine, filtering it, bottling it, and checking out the finished product. Stay tuned. Make sure you click the like and subscribe button. This is going to be a great video and you do not want to miss some of the tips I'm going to give you today. On the street, I'm just smiling big at everybody. Two more blocks and I'll be at your door. Overcome, brother, nothing keeps me melancholy. So in case you're just joining us on this video, uh, we've made plum wine and pineapple wine. And this part two video is going to show you how we're going to finish this wine. These are two great batches of wine. Watch part one and part 1A. Uh, it's going to show you the recipes for making the plum and pineapple wine. Great wine to make for first timers. It's the only recipe you'll need to follow. Let's get right into it. So you can kind of see what this wine looks like and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be racking this wine. This is after the primary fermentation where we put this into these carboys and we let it sit for 30 to 35 days. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to filter this wine. You can kind of see a little bit of sediment down in there, but all in all, it's fairly clear. Um, normally what I would do is rack this wine let it sit for another 30 days, but I'm pretty satisfied that it's clear enough that I'm just going to go right into filtering this wine and showing you how to use this bentonite. If you watch my other videos, I swear by this, this will get all the remaining fine particles out of this, and I'll show you how we're going to add that and filter this wine with bentonite. So here we go. I got the wine set up. We're going to take the airlock off. I got a bucket down below here uh, that we're going to catch the, the racked wine in. Um, sorry, I, usually I would put this directly into another carboy, but I'm uh, running a little short on carboys. So I'm going to put it in the bucket. I'll clean this and then we'll put it back in with the bentonite. So let's get started on racking this wine. Now, one thing you're going to notice here is as this wine is getting down, you can see oh, at the bottom of this carboy, that would be all the dead yeast from when we put this over into the secondary vessel. So I'm going to keep my racking cane very far away from that. I've got this extra to top the carboy. What I don't want to get this pulp in there. So we will top it off with this. I'll also be racking that into our bucket. But man, if you could smell this wine, it smells incredible. Now, a lot of times also what I'll do is I would normally tilt this bottle forward. Uh, but since I've got so much extra in uh, this other container here, I'm going to have plenty to top it off. I just want to finish with one bottle of these. That's my goal here. So you can see I racked the wine totally down into my uh, bucket down here. I'm going to keep this covered because again, oxygen is your antibody. But you can see how clear this wine already is. Adding this bentonite is going to finish this off perfect. All right, so we got the wine rack down to our bucket. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our bentonite mixture. And you can see from the recipe, it calls for four teaspoons for a five-gallon batch. So we're going to use about three-quarters of a teaspoon of the bentonite to a quarter of a cup of warm water. We'll get this mixed in. We'll put it back into our carboy and then put the wine back into the carboy. You'll see what I'm saying as we go. Probably a little confusing, uh, but let's get started. So I got my quarter teaspoon and I'm just going to add three of these. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to stir this into a slurry. We want to get this kind of mixed in as much as we can. And you'll see it, it's it's not a fun product to work with but you'll get the hang of it we just want to get this basically like into a slurry or maybe like milkshake consistency and i will just continue to stir this till i get it to where i want and i'll keep cleaning remember everything i'm using here has been sanitized including my hands 
All right, so you can see it's pretty much the consistency I want, like a like a milkshake. So I'm going to add this to the carboy. So we got our uh, sanitized carboy here. We're just going to add this slurry now directly in here. I probably should be using a funnel, but let's see how good I'll be at this. And that's it. All right, so we got the bentonite down in our carboy. We're going to rack this wine back into there. And that bentonite will mix in with the wine. Uh, we'll stir it each day for a few days. But let's get the siphon going here. So you can see we got the liquid coming down in here. You see a little bit of the bentonite. This is we mix this will go away. Uh, but you can see the color here. It's going to be a beautiful wine. Uh, we want to take it right up to about the top of the lip as close to, as we can get it. We want to be able to we make sure we can get the stir stick in there because we want to be able to stir that, uh, like I said, for the next five days. Um, so we're going to finish racking this. We're going to do the exact same process for the plum. And we'll show you what it looks like when we get them both added with bentonite. got the bentonite in here uh, I, I temporarily put the airlocks on but what we want to do now is we want to stir in this bentonite fairly well and we'll want to do this for the next four to five days so I'm gonna sanitize my stick wait about a minute and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this stick in here and I want to stir this very vigorously we want to get all of this bentonite suspended that we can and like I said, we're going to do this for the next four to five days. This is what's going to filter your wine. I swear by bentonite, once you use it, if you're using some other filtering method, you're going to say, why didn't I discover this sooner? It just makes your job so much easier when you want to fine filter the wine. I'm just going to wipe this off with a little bit of a paper towel so I don't get the flavors mix too much now a lot of people were also asking do I degas my wine and, and the answer is no but when I'm doing this it's probably doing about the same thing so um, the bentonite might have an additional purpose as well so that's it I got it everything sanitized white down I've sanitized my airlocks got those in like i said we're going to stir this for the next four to five days with the bent tonight to get that suspended and swirled around in there that's what's going to filter the wine uh, the next time we get to the next step we'll be racking this wine again spac sweeten it and bottling i almost forgot i had extra plum wine left i filled this glass make sure you're trying your wine through each process it's a beautiful color. I'll have this with dinner tonight, but let's give it a taste. Man, that's going to be a great batch of plum wine. So fast forward about three, four weeks, and here we are. We're ready to get this rack. The bentonite has pulled all the filtering for us to get the pulp and everything out. We're ready to rack this bottle it sweeten it i can't wait because we got the pineapple we got the plum i got my plum shirt on let's get right into finishing the plum and pineapple wine so i hope you can see this but the bentonite is sitting at the bottom of this wine and it's pretty darn clear so we are going to finish this and start racking. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our sanitizer going. We want to sanitize our bottles and our equipment that we're going to need today. So I got a half ounce of star sand. I'm going to put that in the bucket 
and we're going to add two and a half gallons of water per half ounce of star sand. That should be plenty for us today. So we're adding our water. Make sure you watch my sanitation video. I go into complete detail how to sanitize your equipment, um, but I don't want to make this video too long. So uh, it's, it's again, half ounce star sand, two and a half gallons of water, and that'll be plenty for today. So we're going to start sanitizing some bottles. I like to put some in here. We'll use our bottle washer and then we'll uh, swoosh it around a little bit. And we'll, we'll just do the outside as well because you also want to protect, make sure there's nothing in here. And then we'll put this on the drying rack. We're going to need about 10 bottles for the two gallons we have. So you're going to get about five bottles per batch of plum and pineapple. So I'll just finish these bottles up. So we got the sanitizer mixture. I want to show you what else I put in here. I always have a spray bottle. I'll fill this up because I want to spray things down as I go. Um, it's great to have a squirt bottle handy, uh, especially in the fermentation stage. You need one of these. So uh, we got that. We're going to need some measuring spoons for our ingredients, so we'll throw them on our sanitizer. We will definitely need a racking cane because we want to rack this wine over to uh, a, a bucket, where, which is what we'll use to fill our bottles with. So. Uh, you got to have the racking cane, and I'll just get this going through the hose, and I'll just make sure that everything is covered in this sanitizer before we start racking. Also, uh, I'll be sanitizing this bucket. I'm going to basically put in, uh, the wine from our carboys over into here. We'll use this to sweeten our wine, so we'll get this sanitized as well. And don't forget your, your paddle because you'll need this to, uh, as we stir in our stabilizer and our sweetness, to sweeten this wine up a little so bit. So we're basically going to need three things today to finish this wine. We're going to need potassium sorbate, which is stabilizer. We're going to need Camden tablets. And you're definitely going to need the sugar to sweeten this wine and finish it. So one of the first things we want to do is want to, we want to make a simple syrup, which is equal parts water and equal parts sugar. The two gallons that I'm going to make, I'm going to use two cups and of sugar and two cups of water. If we were only doing one gallon, one cup sugar, one cup water will be plenty to uh, do your five bottles of wine. So let's go ahead and get this going. I got the fire going. We'll add our two cups of water and our two cups of sugar. And we don't want to bring this really to a boil. We want to get it to about boiling, but we want to make sure it's completely dissolved. Okay, you can see uh, we're, we got some bubble in here on the edges and we're close to boiling. Uh, but you can see this is what you're shooting for. You don't want to be scraping any sugar off the bottom. It should be crystal clear. All we need to do now is turn the heat off and let this cool to room temperature. Okay, we got the bucket sanitized here that we're gonna rack our wine into, but at this point, we wanna add some chemicals. We wanna add one Camden tablet that I like to crush between two spoons, and these are sterilized. So we'll crush this, and we'll just add it right to the bucket. And this is critical, stabilizer. If you're gonna sweeten your wine, do not miss this step. You will blow corks and you will have a mess. So recommendation is a half a teaspoon per gallon. So we're just doing the plum wine right now. We're going to add our half teaspoon. Just look at the color of this plum wine. I literally can't wait to try this one. So we are ready to start racking this wine. Uh, I got the sterilized racking cane. I'm going to take this off. Now, one thing what we want to do is when I stick this down here, we're going to keep the bottom of this as far from that bentonite as possible. So let me put my hose down in my bucket here. And we'll get the siphon going. Okay. 
And if you could smell this. Beautiful. You can see uh, the bottom there. I, I want to make sure I'm not sucking into that bentonite out. You could rack it again if you wanted to, to get it, uh, you know, completely out and let it uh, settle again. But uh, I'm a professional. And some people will tilt the bottles a little closer to get as much as you can. But uh, you'll find out in winemaking, it's okay to leave a little bit wine behind. I mean, you know, you, you'd rather have clean wine than dirty wine. That's pretty close, and that's where I'm going to leave it. So one thing, again, before you start corking your wine, uh, you want to make sure you're sanitizing your corks. I have a whole video on what size corks to use. Make sure you check that out. I'll put a link in the description. But what we want to do is we want to add sanitizer to these corks. And number one, it'll make your corks go in a little bit easier uh, with your corker, but it sanitizes them as well, which is... A definite must when making wine sanitize make sure you're doing it so you can see when I rack this wine down into our bucket here that we're gonna use for our bottling uh, I put a lid on right away oxygen is your enemy you want to keep as much out as possible but now we're gonna get into the fun stuff uh, we're gonna back sweeten this and I'm gonna show you how to do that I'm gonna do a more detailed video on back sweeten but let's get started and back sweeten this wine so you remember we put the chemicals on the bottom here, the stabilizer and the Camden tablets. So I'm just going to slowly swirl that in uh, with our sterilized paddle. Now, in my opinion, this is the best part about winemaking. If you want to dry wine, you're ready just to take this and put it in a bottle. If I'm making a large batch, I'll usually do a couple dry, mostly semi-sweet, and then a couple sweet. Uh, I just find that's, you know, our preference and, and we have a little bit of everything. But since this is a smaller batch, I'm just going to make a semi-sweet wine, uh, which is our favorite. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I think we got this stirred in a little bit more. We'll just leave our stick in here. So when I'm adding sweetener, uh, there's no scientific method for me. This is our simple syrup. I'm going to add a little bit, stir it, and taste it till it's where I like it. But I'm just going to add a little bit at a time, taste it, and until it's where we want, and then we're ready to bottle. So we're going to slowly add a little bit of this in. I'll probably ma maybe add about a half a cup. You can see we got four cups here, so this will be plenty for both of our batches. And then what I got to do, I got a sterilized straw. And I'm just going to put some in a cup or a shot glass, whatever you have available. Okay, that's still pretty dry. So I'm going to add a little bit more sugar and we'll keep trying this. That was another about a half a cup. So it's getting a little sweeter, but it's still dry. I know for me and my wife. Um, so I'm going to add some more. Like I said, no scientific method for us on how to do this. So right there is almost two cups of the simple syrup for this one gallon batch of wine. And we'll give it a try here. And, you know, you can always make more simple syrup if you like it more sweet. Man, that's pretty good. I'm just going to add a teeny bit more. Looking at my measuring cup here, it's still a little bit over two cups. So I didn't quite put two cups, but I think that's what it's going to take. So right there, we are exactly two cups. And I I'm guaranteeing this is going to be perfect for us. And I'll probably start bottling, but let me check it. Here it is. Man, I tell you. That's a great batch. You got to try the plum wine. This is going to be amazing when it sits and ages, but it's fantastic. Best wine you'll ever make, homemade wine. Check it out. I'm going to get ready for the next step. We're going to bottle this plum wine. So we got one of them little bottle things here, and it has a special tip where you, when you push the tip down, it lets the wine flow down. So we're going to try and get this as close to up here as we can. 
my wife's a lot better at this. I wish she was here to help. But uh, you can also see there's sanitizer in there. That's okay. It's drinkable in the diluted form. So that's probably about do another squirt there where we want to be. Let's do the, another one. This is so much fun to make your own wine. It's, it's just, I can't tell you enough. You'll see here is I'm reusing bottles. I strongly suggest that because bottles can be expensive. Um, I reuse all my bottles and whoever I give wine away, I try and get them back. Well, there's three. I think we might get five and then maybe a little extra for later. I think I'm going to have to use the funnel for this last one. So you can see here, I got kind of a professional corker. Uh, but basically, we're going to load the cork in on the top, put our wine bottle down in, and we'll just squeeze it down. So we're going to do the exact same thing for the pineapple wine. I'm not going to bore you too much with this, but uh, we're going to get our chemicals added. Again, very important. Potassium sorbate, which is stabilizer, will prevent you from uh, your corks from blowing. So half te teaspoon per gallon. And then we're going to crush up one Camden tablet. And I'm going to put some music on. So you don't have to be bored. One Camden. Let's get to racking. Hungry for the road all my life. Thirsty for adventure all my youth. Chasing all my freedoms down Liberty Avenue. Every time I hear a phrase My mother used to say to me Everything happens for a reason I get the feeling I need A little taste of Add two cups of simple syrup to this wine, and it's perfect. Nothing like kitchen conversation. Steam coming up off the stove. Photographs down the staircase showing our stories unfold. Okay, so you can see I got five bottles of the plum out of the one gallon batch and five gallon or five bottles of the pineapple as well. So I don't know if you can see this, but look at the color of this pineapple wine. My wife tried it and she thought it was awesome. And here's the plum. So that's it. Part two complete. We did the pineapple wine. We did the plum wine. We finished them up. The only thing left to do is I like to put them in a tub and lay them flat for uh, 10 to 14 days. Because if you're going to blow corks, at least everything's staying in that tub. So you can see I ran out of wine here, but I'll make sure this is the first one that we drink. I don't usually like that much headspace, but uh, it'll be the first one. So I'll let these sit on the wine rack for three months before we try them. And I'll let you know how they are. I'm going to do a future video of all the wines I did in the last year. And my wife and I are going to rank these from number one to number whatever. Don't miss the banana wine completion. It looks amazing. It's going to be great. You don't want to miss that one. Make sure you click the like and subscribe Every button. Time I hear a song, my father used to sing to me.